You are unaccustomed to seeing Bertrude smiling, and yet there she is, doing just that. You soon see why. You observed before how her manner seems so to soften to the degree it can whenever Wolfert is around. If only I could have seen their faces, then. What was your secret, dear? I asked dear Bertrude. It appears they are reminiscing about old times in the Commonwealth. Flame resistant ink, Sandalwood. It was the inks themselves which kept those volumes from being burnt to ash. Flame resistant inks, of course. The good officers who came to visit. They were so intent on burning all the evidence, they did not stop to think the evidence was fireproof. Alas, that they later found a way to burn thy stamping press regardless. By written words, they moved us many times, and many others whom we knew there in the southern bogs. No matter, dear Bertrude, what's done is done. At least we made it difficult for them. Is that not so? While introducing some of our fellow citizens to new ideas. Nah, perhaps. My words would not have reached near half as many were it not for you. Not to mention how I managed to elude them for another decade or so. I'm ever thankful for your sacrifice. Thy thanks shall not be necessary, Sandalwood. Well, you shall have to take them from me anyhow. Thank you, Bertrude, for helping me fulfill, helping to fulfill a modest author's dreams. What good's a stamping press without good inks? No good at all. <laughs> they exchange a laugh at this, but then... Even still, and through this new ordeal, thou hast no love for us, is that not so? Mm. Bertrude? Uh. Nay, we understand full well. Thou needst not further explain thyself. There are different kinds of love, Bertrude. On that account, thou hast nothing to teach us, Sandalwood. They each remain silent for a time. Our hearts, they cannot be controlled, Bertrude. Blasted things, they are. They act well on their own. He puts away his pipe. I am blessed to have you in my life, back in the Commonwealth and here as well, I mean. That, although I know that it is not enough. At first, Bertrude does not seem to acknowledge this in any way, but then... Nay, Sandalwood. It is enough. It is enough. She departs without awaiting a response, rushing past you as she goes. Wilfred soon turns away as well, politely bidding you a good evening. The two old friends have evidently managed their way past certain tensions in their long-standing relationship. They uh, rather seem to draw a certain strength from one another. No. I, I, I don't know. That seems that seems like a weird mix to me. Weird bog creature in a tree, but you know. Who am I the judge? Flight takes you near to where you breached past Stormwall into Deathless Tempest. With the climate and the downside intensifying, you wonder if the storm has spilled forth from its confines and started to ravage other regions of the land. Oh, that's it. Not very interesting lore tidbit. Oh, I have a horn. Didn't even notice. Pleasure to encounter you within the skies themselves, O Nightwings. They deliberately crashed into us, Father, yet you still address them in such a cordial manner. Now, Almer, I am uh, certain that this was an honest accident, and it appears no lasting damage has been done. Please take the helm, and I shall go start to pick up all the fallen artifacts which shook free from the walls after the impact. Perhaps some of these old heirlooms may yet be repaired with adhesives drawn from certain floor. We may find along our long and difficult quest. Damn you, Nightwings, you stay away from us. What? Who's running into who now, huh? I wasn't even moving. Oh, it scared you. It's alright. It's, it's a very interesting sounding horn. It's, it's like an air horn mixed with a fog horn. 
Yonder lies the ridge of goal, somewhere less imposing than when viewed yeah, somewhat less imposing when viewed from this vantage point. Do you not agree, reader? The myths of the downside hold that it is no mere ridge of stone, but the remains of Lord Gandroth, once slain by a goal, Goliath and himself. Though perhaps such tales are of little import now, when you stand to confront the dissidents there in just a short while. Uh, vocations. Uh, Hamitha's gonna do some, some sabotage. Uh, let's do vocations. Try to get those max out. You make a successful landing in Downside Prairie, near the southern edge of the Downside. Memories of having first met Hedwin, Jodariel, and Ruki come flooding back. You should now have some time in the vicinity before continuing onward towards the Ridge of Gold by land. You volunteer to survey the sweeping plains around the Black Wagon together with Fulford and Tizo. Come along, my boy. Tizo was just about to go on ahead. The search turns up nothing of much note, though wandering with Wilfred and Tizo provides reprieve from a long day on the road. Together you return to the wagon in somewhat better spirits. You should have some time remaining with which you may pursue your vocations. Um, how are we doing on leveling people up? Is anyone close to leveling? Rookie's 700 away. I think everyone's pretty much leveled up for the time being, so let's do the, uh, the, uh, the global buffing. Uh, presents or quickness? I think we're okay in quickness. Let's get presents. Three more of those to do before we're maxed. Have one more quickness and then two in glory. Well, the glory one's probably not even worth it. Uh, here in the windswept fields of Downside Prairie, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin you liberated at the fall of Cilium. You learn Hedwin returns safely to the commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcome, his past transgressions all forgiven. He was to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the council or the blood border, each equally as lucrative and secretive as well. Imp is cute. Imp is not as cute as Tizo, though. Tizo's the, the cutest imp. That's all that matters. Uh, however, he refused, and before the stunned council members could do anything about it, he left them. He since made contact with Wolfert's agents and is working together with them, thus the ranks of the revolution grow stronger. Per the messenger imp custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin. Word for word says, keep going, I'll see you here. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Soon your companions are all abuzz about it. Yeah, that's how it's done, Hedwin. Right behind you, chum. May that boy's spirit infect a lot of ye as what a plague. Uh, Tizo is happy to hear Hedwin is well back in the Commonwealth. I always thought Hedwin was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? A glorious example Hedwin sets for all of us. Well done, Hedwin, my boy. I knew you could do it. I wonder if you'll ever find the one he fell for. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with a newfound resolve. Plus one hope. Now what's Ron got for us? Oh, hey guys, died. say, what are you guys doing all the way back here? You know it's not so bad here. I was thinking and I got some pretty good stuff. I think you might ought to check it out. Upgrades. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bear's pyre uh, recovers equal to 50% of the damage dealt. That's pretty good. Put that on one of your attackers. Some free healing in. Got it by the upper 
Ocean, obviously. Stamina and are just so broken. Just pick up the orb and fly it in instantly. I mean, I probably only need one uh, plus speed. Crone. Because that's kind of her thing is vanishing. Where's she at right now? She got the moon crest. Uh, it'll go up to two seconds at max rank. Which I guess is okay. Try it out for the next one. Uh, once more, you have returned to the Ridge of Goal, and your companions stand ready beneath a still nice guy, awaiting the commencement of the rites. You overhear some of their words to one another as you await the signal in the stars. So we got to deal with the dissidents this time, huh? Lower thy voice, and raise thine eyes aloft. Just then you observe a glint of starlight that begins to shine above, and your companions soon fall silent. Best theme music. That doesn't seem too bad. There's gotta be like an achievement for turning all of these on, right? Beast, sun beast. Oh, still, still scared. Why not both, guy? Hear me, you exiles of the night wings. The eight scribes summon you to the ridge of Gore. Your adversaries in the rites this eve shall be the dissidents. Extinguish now their pyre, and glory shall be yours. Now prepare yourselves. All right, so it's you again, is it? You kicked us down before, but now we're gonna pay you back. Your adversary is a prepared reader who shall conduct the rights on your behalf. Choose quickly your triumvirate. Dogs might be too quick for the chrome though. Fired up and ready to take on the dissidents. Oh, 
Benedictine for another go. Let's have it, mates. Tear him to shreds. So too strong. If you're really gonna make us work for this, is that right, mates? Well then, we got our cut out. Yeah, we got our work cut out for us. The scribes shall simply smite them down next time. Wow. Bias much voice? The ceremony is complete. Blah. What happened back there, mates? I'll have your hides for this. Seems like there's only like a story of the first two times you face them. Hey, rookie's maxed out. They ever said anything like that about me since it's, you know, I'm very well regarded where I'm from. By everyone, in fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just get the damage. A blessing from the Alpha Chief himself. secured victory over the dissidents in a convincing manner, there is little time for you to rest as yet the knife beckons and the next rite reveals itself to be a vital one. In Provenzale. Worm guy? Yeah, I do need to level him up a little bit. I... I'm not a huge fan of how the worms play, so I haven't been using him that much, but... I was thinking the same thing, he needs to get a little playtime. Uh, it is already time, reader, come see for yourself, the cloudness of the season now presents to us another chance. He heads out straight away, and you follow him in turn. Indeed, among the remaining stars, you only see one with which you are familiar now burns ever brightly. The path to freedom is laid before you. Well, maybe not this right, because I kind of need uh, need good players for this one. Cause the seasons are actually kind of tough. Let's see. Are fighting the pyre hearts, it looks like.
That's gonna be annoying. But that's fine. Even if they're not going in, they're still kind of getting experience in the form of inspiration. Which means they'll get bonus experience the next time they actually gain real experience, if that makes sense. Uh, picture the rights as a wheel broken free from a black wagon. It is turning uncontrollably and soon shall reach a sudden stop. We should have several chances left for someone to go free, either us or else our adversaries, but not both. What is at stake each time further? Complicated now, I must admit, knowing we have so few opportunities remaining. Those whom we send back into the Commonwealth, should our plans somehow fail, they may look back upon their exile with fondness. So returning to the Commonwealth is not inherently a mercy, I don't think. Moreover, there are also those among us who count, who we count on to prevail in the rights. We need them in the Nightwings just as much as we need them in the Commonwealth. We cannot simply grow our numbers here, given the circumstances. And so, who stays, who goes, these choices affect us all. No pressure there, my boy. Thanks. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I shall go and take my leave for now. Let's set forth again at daybreak. Hello, my boy. Tizo and I were just reminiscing on old times. Tizo is happy to have Wolfred back among the Nightwings once again. Thank you, Tizo. I am happy to be back among the Nightwings as well. Though, you understand why we were forced to be apart for so long, don't you? Tizo indicates he understands full well. I trust that Tariq provided some good company and song during the intervening time. Tizo confirms he didn't enjoy traveling alongside the Lone Minstrel for some time. And there he is, right on cue. Something I can do for you, Wilfred, sir? <laughs> Wilfred laughs warmly at this. No, Tariq, we are well enough for now. Tizo and I, we were just remembering the times when we first met the three of us. Tizo was rather apprehensive then, as I recall. He was merely being circumspect. I'm sure Tizo has the sharpest of instincts at all. Sharpest instincts of us all. But the bite he gave you, sir, it left a permanent impression, did it not? It did indeed. I consider it a mark of friendship. May it stay with me for all my days. It's a good reminder that despite the challenges we faced together in the past, my time among the Nightwings has been extraordinary. Likewise, can I say the same, sir? Tizo shares the sentiment as well. Wolfred turns to you. I should apologize, my boy. Here we are talking of a history you do not share. Believe me when I say we're skipping over many of the bad parts. What I mean is, it isn't my intention to exclude you as we wax nostalgic. The Nightwings that you know, we are a strange assortment, are we not? Those of us who share some kinship from the past, I suppose we cannot help but seek some warmth in it. But it should not be the exclusion of the friendships that we forge right now. So please, why don't you join us for a bit? Together, you, Wilfred, Tizo, and the Lone Minstrel talk a while about the times gone by. The three of them are pleased to be back in one another's company again, having grown close through shared experience in the past. Just the same, they have welcomed you into the group. In spite of the hardships you have faced, some of these idle moments you share together may one day form memories you think back on with fondness. Soon, the conversation winds down, though it lifted all your spirits for the while. 